What's up everybody? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to sit down for a while at a bank of a pond and try to get some shots of some geese and ducks. Also, I want to go over just a, a few tips uh, that I wish I would have known when I started out doing nature and wildlife photography. I should have brought my chair blind out uh, for this situation. We'll have to bring that out another time. Uh, there's enough natural materials out here to kind of blend in a little bit. Um, I'm not camoed up at all, of course, but I am wearing, you know, mute, uh, moot colors, mute, moot. It should be okay for the most part and just camp out for a while. So I have pretty good cover. I'm really low to the ground. The, the brush is over my on top of my head. And I can see the ducks and the geese really good. They're still a ways far out. I have this little area back underneath here on the side and underneath the camera to utilize for my binoculars. So the first pro tip that I want to share with you guys that I wish I would have known in the very beginning when I first started nature and wildlife photography is utilize natural resources uh, for a blind. Camo works well and uh, camo netting works well and chair blinds, regular hides and blinds like that. Those are fantastic. It's also great to utilize natural resources and brushery around you to make an A-frame type blind over your tripod. What's really cool about that guys is you can utilize it year round. Pretty much in all seasons you can find something out in nature to uh, camouflage your gear and yourself with. So another tip I wish I would have known when I first started is have a second body. I don't know how many times I've been out here, either I didn't bring enough batteries or you know, there's a malfunction with the camera or the certain lens that's on that camera. I wish I would have had a backup camera to utilize really quick on the fly when things happen so fast that in a moment's notice, I have a backup uh, to pick up and start shooting away. It would have saved me a lot of time, hassle, headache, and uh, I would have been able to have a lot more keepers in the long run, if, in the long run, if I had a second body. This pond, thankfully, is not frozen over completely. Got a bunch of ice along the edge here. So my next tip that I wish I would have known when I first started is stay off all these forums, like the Reddit forums and stuff like that. Um, just because it's, in, in my personal opinion, in my experience anyway, there's some good that you that you can come away with and you can learn a lot from a lot of different people. The majority is just very toxic. It's very masculine, it's a very toxic environment where you know it's all about whose camera is bigger than whose and what's using what and it's all, a lot of it is just nonsense and if I would have, at least try to steer away from that in the very beginning because at, at first I was like, well, I should learn a lot. I should go into these forums and, and start learning about photography and about nature and wildlife and conservation. And while there is some truth to that, the majority, a lot of it, is just very toxic. And just learned in the very beginning to get involved locally, in person, locally, with like-minded photographers, like-minded individuals who, who are very educated and willing to teach. Uh, that to me is much more valuable and much more important as a nature and wildlife photographer. My next tip is also that I wish I would have known in the very beginning is your gear doesn't matter. 
yet. Here's what I mean. Just wish I would have just slowed down a little bit. I focused so heavily on what everybody else was using, what everybody else was saying to use, uh, that I just got discouraged a lot. And I just thought that if I just had that, then I would be a good photographer. If I only had the money for this, then I would be a good photographer. If I only could get my hands on that specific model, then only then the photography gods would rain down on my photograph and make my photograph a lot better. That is a lie. I wish somebody would have told me, Kevin, slow down, slow down, enjoy the process, stop worrying about what everybody else is doing, stop worrying about what everybody else is using, and just enjoy the process and as you progress and start to learn about photography start learning about composition and lighting and then you start utilizing those to your advantage with what gear you have only then down the road when it's time when you're being limited by your gear then that would be a great time to do the upgrade but not at the beginning enjoy the process be present in the moment is what I would have just told myself because it's way too easy to lose that passion that flame that joy of nature photography and wildlife photography when you're out here worrying about everything else other than the experience. Well, while they're chilling down at the end there, we'll go on to the next one. And that is, I wish I would have early on started to develop my own unique style instead of trying to copy everybody else's style and everybody else's photograph. Now, I'm not saying to not be encouraged and be inspired by other, you know, other people's work. What I am trying to say is, at some point, step away from that and keep a little bit of a distance <clears throat> distance, and try to develop our own unique style. Sounds like they're getting a little rowdy. Guess I'm just trying to say is that if we're not careful, uh, that we'll just be looking like everybody else and we'll just be a cookie cutter photographer instead of trying to stand out and be different and being unique is what we want. We all have a style when it comes to our composition uh, and our editing and it's just good it's good to step into that and let the artist that is inside each and every one of us come out instead of worrying about what everybody else is going to think about our photos <sighs> here they come here they come uh, uh. yes yes we didn't get a close shot we're going to try to get a little bit closer to check it out Love waterfowl. It's so exciting. And that brings me on, guys, to my next tip that I wish I would have known early on is there's so much wildlife out there, right? There's so much to be excited about. And wow, that is so cool to be able to have such a vast amount of wildlife at our fingertips to photograph. I kind of wish I would have done a lot of different types of wildlife, but focused heavily on one type of subject and get really, really good at that one subject and learn its behavior and learn its habitat and learn its feeding, the way it feeds and hunts and, and gathers and mates. For me personally, that's waterfowl. That's the ducks, the geese, the herons, the egrets, the swans, Just slowing down and learning about one or two different types of wildlife and then the many species within that category. Uh, the anxiousness and the excitement, the struggles, the frustrations, it's all worth it. The experience is always, always, always worth it. My next tip that I wish I would have known early on in my photography journey is there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Here's what I mean. Of course, there are not so great photos. We see them every day on social media, uh, but that is subjective. Art is subjective uh, and photography is art. Uh, so what might not be a good photo to me might be a good, great photo to you or to anybody else. Um, but when I say there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity, is that sometimes we can get so laser focused on getting the shot or how we're gonna post process, how we're gonna edit, so wrapped up in tunnel vision on the photo itself that we miss the opportunity to experience that joy in the experience, if that makes sense.
It's about the opportunity that is in front of us to get outdoors in the nature, find that excitement, and hold on to that joy. As soon as I pack up, here comes some swans coming down. It always happens. <laughs> Always happens right when I'm getting my camera together to get up. I'm gonna head back to the Jeep here in just a second and make some really hot coffee and enjoy ourselves for the rest of the evening. But I wanted to just uh, jump in here and say my very last tip. I wish I would have known when I first started and picked up a camera for nature and wildlife photography, and that's comparison is the thief of joy, friends. And if we're not careful, we really can go down a slippery slope of just comparing our work to the next. And I say it time and time and time again, and uh, I beat this like a dead horse, but it's true. Be inspired and be encouraged and lifted up and be motivated by other photographers and their work. Uh, but don't allow that to, to hinder you to, from growing and to the full potential that, that you can be as a photographer and the, the, be creative and have the creative juices flowing. If we're not careful, we can find ourselves, instead of being inspired, we can find ourselves kind of uninspiring of just thinking that we're not good photographers. And truthfully, there really is going to be always somebody that takes a better photo. That's okay. That's totally okay. And uh, I think we just need to remind ourselves over and over again that there is no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. And instead, take other people's journey and other people's experiences and let that be your reason to come out here and live your best life. But if we lose that joy in nature and wildlife photography, well, then all this is just trivial. Even concealments, like how we just did with the makeshift blind, uh, using natural resources and natural uh, things around in the environment. Really good idea, highly, highly recommend it, especially with the camo and just kind of concealing yourself the best because once they see you <laughs> moving or whatever, pff, they're gone. You got, you got one or two shots and that's it, one or two opportunities with it. But that's really cool, guys, because it's the hunt, it's the adventure, it's the an anticipation and the excitement that draws you back out here time and time again. like we were meant to be out here you know what I mean like we were created to be out in nature away from the cities and away from the chaos this is where we're supposed to be at and really that leads me to my very last tip that I wish I would have known when I first started nature and wildlife photography and that is this is extremely beneficial for our mental health something that every one of us deals with to some degree whether it's depression anxiety there's other avenues that are great uh, to help with those things but man there's nothing better in my opinion than coming out here in nature and being present in the moment with our cameras it's just a simpler life you know what i mean it's just things are just more simple out here for whatever reason, it's just, it doesn't take away our problems. Obviously, it doesn't make things better outside of that, but it gets our mind right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed those few photographs and those tips regarding what I wish I would have known when I first started. And hopefully it can help you guys out. Uh, give it a like if you liked it, share it, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed if you don't wanna miss future videos on nature and wildlife photography. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys wish you would've known when you first picked up nature and wildlife photography. I would love to hear about them. Until the next video guys, take care, God bless. Remember there is no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Get outdoors into nature and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you. Take care, peace out.